Hello everyone, today I have a limited color palette video for you. So I'm going to color this sketch that I drew a few days ago while I was outdoors sketching with my friends. And I forgot to bring my watercolor box, so here we are today. So this is the National Stadium of Singapore, and I will be coloring this sketch with these three colors. We have Azo Yellow, Verdita Blue, and Entraquinoid Scarlet. Let's switch out Azo Yellow. This is one of my favorite yellows now. I have featured this color before. This is a very intense, almost electric yellow color. I used to like Hansai Yellow Medium, but I may switch over to using this small. Often. This is PY151. Next up, we have Andra Quinoid Scarlet. This is a color that I just bought recently. And this color looks very much like, as the name suggests, or Scarlet. This is PR168. Looks pretty transparent to me, just like Azo Yellow. The last color here is Verdita Blue. This is a mix of three pigments, PB28, which is cobalt, PB36, which is cerulean blue, and PW4, which is a white. So this color does look very much like cobalt blue. So these two colors are for so these two colors, they are from series three, which is more expensive. This is series two. And now let's paint the color wheel to see what kind of mixes, what kind of colors we can get. We just add a little bit of anthraquinoid scarlet. And a bit more. This is a rather warm orange. Very nice. And this is how the scarlet looks like on its own. And now let's add a little bit of blue to it. Maybe a bit more. Right, perhaps a bit too much here. Maybe I need to add a little bit more water. Let's have more blue and see how it looks like. This is how Verdita blue looks like on its own. Let me add a little bit of yellow to it. Get a nice yellow green and now let's have the three colors mixed together to see if we can get a very nice neutral gray tone let me add a little bit more blue here And let's see what happens when we mix the three colors in concentration. So this is how the swatches look when dry. This seems like a pretty versatile palette. We can get vibrant greens and orange for the purple or violet. It's a bit more muted, but this is still quite lovely. There is some granulation with Vertita Blue, so for greens and uh, purples or violets, we can see some granulation. And here we have the grey tones that I tried to mix. So this is scarlet, this is orange, and this is orange with a bit more yellow. It's very, very nice, very beautiful. And I tried to mix a concentrated uh, mix and this doesn't seem to be dark enough for me. So usually with cobalt blue or cerulean blue, you will need to use a lot of paint to get that very dark, almost black color. And since this is a mix of cobalt blue and cerulean blue, I don't expect it to be like really dark, as dark compared to thalo blue or ultramarine mixes. But overall, this is a pretty nice palette. Right, let's paint this sketch. This sketchbook that I'm using, this is a customized sketchbook made by the Society of Physical Disabled in Singapore. And the paper is actually paper that I passed to them. This is the Lana Aquarelle 100% cotton watercolor paper. 
that I received from a very lovely YouTube viewer. Thank you very much. I managed to make four sketchbooks out of the watercolor pad that I received. And the quality of this paper, this Lana Aquarelle paper, it's excellent. I think the quality is right up there with Archer's and Fabriano Artistico. So this is very, very high quality watercolor paper. I really enjoy painting on this paper. So I'm wetting the surface just to paint the sky. So it was a very cloudy day that day. So I'm going to use some grays to paint the sky. Let's have some blues. And I want to mix that with some yellow and red to get the, to get the grays going. And the stadium, this part here, it's actually gray in color. So let me just paint that. Parts of the buildings here are gray as well. I may want to add a little bit more blue here right at the top. There are, there are some areas of red here and there, so I want to paint them first before I overlay all the shadow areas with black. Let's see if we can get dark green with azo yellow and verdita blue. So if you take a look at the reference photo, this green that I'm painting right now, it's actually supposed to be much darker, almost like a phthalo green mixed with some cool red, those type of green. But I'm not able to get that level of intensity because cobalt blue or vertita blue and cerulean blue, we just cannot get that kind of um, intensity but still nice it's different i will try and create the shadow colors for the green later on so now it's just a mix of azo yellow and vertita blue some buildings here require me to paint them with blue so this is vertita blue on its own this part here the wash is much lighter so i'm going to dilute dilute the blue that I have to paint this section here and this structure behind is supposed to be a gray so I'm using the same gray that I used here for the water it's mostly highlight so I'm just going to paint a very light wash of the gray that I mix with the three primary colors. It's just a very light wash just to take the white off the paper at certain sections. All right, this is the dark color that I mixed with. So this is the mixture that I got from mixing the three primary colors together. Let me paint the horizontal stripes. I need to touch up a bit to make the, the lines thicker. Let's paint the shadows here. This part here, it's actually gray and it is more blue. Let's paint this part here, the bottom of the trees. Let's paint the shadows for the trees, perhaps a bit more blue.
So this darker area here is actually reflected on the water. So this part here, I need it to be a bit more obvious. There's actually some green on the water bank. So I forgot to paint that earlier. So let me just paint that now. The tree trunks. Right, let me just add some little details to certain areas. So this is the completed sketch. It's a rather subdued limited color palette. And I think this limited palette works great for pen and ink because no matter how much paint you use to mix together, you never can quite achieve that intense, very dark tone. So you can use it to paint over your pen and ink lines and those lines, they will always show up through. So this part, for example, I wanted it to be as dark as black as possible, but I wasn't quite able to achieve that. But this is, I think, good enough. And I like the variation of color that is within this mix. So the sky is a mix of the three colors. It's wet on wet, so we can get some very beautiful transition from the wash to the white of the paper and as mentioned earlier this is the lana aquarelle 100 percent cotton paper it's very good so this green it's yellow azo yellow with verdita blue it's very nice i tried to paint the shadows here and it looks like this for the reflection on the water this is mostly verdita blue and endocrinoid scarlet so the muted violet or the muted purple, it works pretty nicely here. And all these darker areas here, they are mostly Radita Blue and the Scarlet. For the blue here, the red and the yellow, I used the colors straight. For the blue, the red and the yellows here, I used the paint straight from the tube without mixing. And for small areas like this, they work quite well. These are very vibrant colors. This is mixed with azo yellow and androcrinoid scarlet. So we have more trees here, the shadows. For these areas here, they are supposed to be black, but this is the darkest I can get. Azo yellow, very beautiful, very clean. And we see some nice transition here within the greens. We have some blues and this is again the orange from Iso yellow and scarlet. We have the sky here. So initially I painted a light wash of blue and then I mixed the grays to charge in the color when the wash was still wet. So for this limited color palette, the limitation would be the inability to mix vibrant purples or violets and it's very difficult to get the really dark blacks. If I need to paint something really dark, I would probably add French Ultramarine to this limited palette. I hope this video is helpful and interesting. By the way, I am selling off some of my excess watercolor paint to mix space to get more colors to test and also for my limited color palette videos. So if you are interested to get some paint from me, just visit the link in the video description below to see what colors I am selling. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.